what are the challenges faced by companies if we want like to cope with with this generation yeah, I think this is a complex question, but I, maybe I go to one thing first. And this is something that we just heard. We, talk, we heard about that then Gen Z needs to be taken seriously. We see that a person is cycling through the country and uh, uh, listening to them and all of that. I'm going to tell you why you're running out of business in five years. Five reasons in five minutes if you don't listen to Gen Z and what you have to do. Why would I know? So um, I don't have a bike like this. Uh, I wear plateau heels, that's not a good match. Um, but what I do, I work in recruiting. So I talk to people every day, every hour, every generation, and I see patterns here. So I talk from experience, and this experience is telling me one thing. You're running out of business if you don't speak the generation's language. And by language, I'm talking about the literal language. Something that if you are a German-speaking person, we call it, so, uh, for instance, Gendern. And this is something where everybody's like, you know, dropping the conversation. They don't want to use gender inclusive language. That's too annoying. We don't want to do it. Um, but I tell you one thing Fridays for Future, big demonstrations creating awareness for climate change all, all, all over the nation. There are talented, young, smart people on stage. They use inclusive language, they use gender inclusive language. And for the German speakers, they gender you against the wall. Yeah, so they use gendering like there was no tomorrow. Reason number two, if you still believe diversity and inclusion is a trend, think again. Because this generation grows with TikTok people who tell them all about racism, transphobia, um, I don't know, ableism, things that they see, experience on TikTok. They're very aware of that. And it's not enough as a company to say, yeah, it's not okay, please don't bully, that's not okay. You need to take a stand. Be anti-racist, anti-homophobic, and as a company, declare this and also give your employees the tool to communicate with one another respectfully. Reason number three, you might still think people like to come to work or want to come to work. There is a physical thing about this. So we have an amazing office. I work for an e-commerce company. It's a 10-story building. Everything is glass, super rooftop terrace, super, super amazing. Nobody's going there. <laughs> Especially when we talk about mountains, Berlin is just very dirty. It's just very dirty. If you like the mountains, this is not the place for you. But it's still a really great company. So you might want to work from somewhere else. You know, we need to say goodbye to the idea that everybody comes to one place, everyone, for eight hours, and then they leave again. And then, of course, this has a different layer, which is that Gen Z, of course, they like nice teams and all that. But at the same time, colleagues are colleagues. And it's all also about friends and your private life. So if they like one person in your team that's really cool and the others are just OK, that's a good thing. That's enough. <laughs> now, the second to last reason is you still think that when coming to work, people need to focus. You know how like, you, know, you open one tab, you do one task, and then you finish the task. Everybody who's working in Agile, we call it sprints. Cool thing. I love it. However. Gen Z is very aware of mental health, right? They will be very transparent, for instance, about their ADHD diagnosis. And if not, they just have a really short attention span because they're always on TikTok. We just clap to the swiping rhythm. That's the attention span. So instead of expecting them to have like one tab open and then working on it, they'll be having 15 tabs open. But they'll be closing them by the end of the day, right? So they want to work. They can focus and concentrate. It's just a different vibe. It's just a different rhythm. And the last reason is, or the last reason why you might be running out of business is when you still think you know everything. Because it's all, of course, about listening to what the generation says and to understanding their needs. And when I started working full time 10 years back, it was all about Generation Y. And they were like, what, work-life balance? They just don't want to work. Do you all remember that conversation? I had that 10 years back, especially, for instance, in like agencies where working extra hours was like super normal. That's what you do. That's how it goes. And now we're having these conversations again? I don't think so. Can we please just overcome this? Can we please work on inclusion, on intergenerational conversations, and find common ground? Because I believe that this is possible. And if you really listen to what I just said, then you're not running out of business. Congratulations. <laughs>